just like really blown away by what you can do with AI art. Now that I've like understood and like seen how this AI works or like its limitations and possibilities, it's just crazy. And I really believe that this is the next step. Like this is where our industry is going to and like this is gonna be a part of our lifestyle from this point forward. And to deny that and kind of stick to your old ways. I think you're like shooting yourself on the leg here. If you haven't touched it, if you haven't, generate some of your own artworks and like incorporate those artworks into your own urgent artworks then I, I don't think you can make that stick because it's it's a totally different feeling to see it from afar and to be able to actually use it um, on your own and create wonderful pieces uh, because of AI art okay now that I've like mentioned all these amazing things about AI there's a lot of like debate and like controversy going around about like plagiarism, copyright limitations or like intellectual property stuff like that so i want to dedicate this video to those topics maybe i could do a vi another video about that like discussing its moral implications i just want to show you the features of stable diffusion so it can create like styles from different eras different artists different mediums and it really does them to a really convincing manner with just like a small resolution like for me the, the small resolution is fine doesn't really bother me that much so right now it's 512 by 320 so if you want to go higher than that you need um typically a higher end gpu right now i'm using a rtx 2060 here i've tested it for like a spooky storybook children's illustration type of thing and you can see like even though these aren't really coherent like i can tell that there's some sort of visual design and shape language that the ai is trying to tell me which i can then incorporate into my work so that's like one of the biggest things about ai art is it's not so much so that you get an end product just by typing things it's that you can brainstorm much more quickly by like using ai to your advantage the closest thing that i i guess i can tell you about it is it's a pinterest board for the art that you want to create that's really 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 specific so if you want like a spooky children's book like you can search for on pinterest but you can get way more specific than that like because um photo references or like references in general found on the internet are just a bit too vague and generic uh, with ai art it's like you're creating your own mood board that's way more specific and like way more refined than the ones that you can find on pinterest so it's like doing these like blue sky um studies for you to get inspired from and yeah these this one is really really cool i was amazed by this one because it has like a really good sense of lighting so there was a strong lighting here strong backlight and scully spooky kind of look like jack skeleton type thing so yeah really really cool also the 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 trees also catch some of that light so it has like this idea this sense of um everything is three-dimensional and it's like being lit by the light source in place it's a really really cool thing i've only shown like 2d elements we can also go to 3d so let's say octane render this is where like how ai can also create 3d like images like 3d renders and they're all so beautiful so like this you can see it's really really detailed as if it's a 3d render i could never make something like this because it's, it just looks so 3d and photorealistic that that i'm glad that i can tell the ai to make something like this for me that way I don't have to learn as much to create um, something like this if I want to be primarily a 2D illustrator, 2D painter. Um, I can just, you know, let AI handle the um, 3D stuff for me. So something like that. So it, it can span across different mediums. So this is 3D. You can see all the wonderful 3D renders out here. Um, let's look for digital illustration. Of course, you've already seen this. So these are more portrait pop art type thing and you can see like it has its limitations it can't really do faces very well or like it doesn't understand human anatomy very well 
but if um uh, at like these rare moments you can do a really convincing face with like realistic proportions realistic rendering and it's amazing but yeah not all the time it's gonna be great but yeah it is what it is then other than that we can also go for oil painting this looks very very traditional but this was done by the ai and it looks so beautiful the textures are so beautiful i, I feel like if you showed me this painting i wouldn't even be able to tell that this was made by an ai and this was completely digital because there was no like traditional paint involved really crazy still blows my mind to this day oh so, yeah so other than that of course there are like more traditional mediums that we can check so for example this one i think um oh this is kind of like a colored pencil type of look you see like there's like this grainy texture that implies this is a colored pencil drawing then the other one that i want to show is photography so not just oil painting digital illustration in 3d it can also do photography so here i'm not sure why people are um generating boxing oh okay. it's obama boxing like it can also create convincing photographs that maybe you can photo bash into your work one way or another so not only are digital illustrators can benefit from this but also other people from other um disciplines like photography can benefit from this as well so really really interesting uh now that i've shown you how powerful it is i'm gonna show you the few ways that you can install it and have access to it so there's one called crayon crayon with ai so this is like the most basic thing it's a uh, mini doll e so it's a more like bite-sized version of um, ai art and if you just want to test some things out um, this is a great starting point i'm just gonna let that generate and the other one if you've been like following the scene um there's mid journey dolly 2 and stable diffusion so stable diffusion is open source and that's the that's the one that i'm using right now and it's honestly kind of um on par with the other ai generators out there so i'd say if you have the money and um if you you want things to be more convenient to you you can use dolly 2 or mid journey but if you're like me and want to save up some money or if you want to have um more control over your outputs um customize them things like that i go for stable diffusion because stable diffusion is like really really customizable so to install um stable diffusion on your system you'd have to have at least four gigabytes of vram on your gpu if you don't understand what that means you can go to over here search dx diag or dx diag or whatever if you're on windows um it should be here so search vx diag then this should pop up then look for display then look for your gpu and look for display memory or vram and i have six gigs of vram um uh, preferably it's like 10 10 gigabytes or like 12 gigabytes so that's the most ideal but um if you don't have a high-end gpu you can still use ai art and generate some ar artworks now uh, i'm not too sure about amd gpus amd i think you can only get into ai art by a few forks and through the 6000 series so 6xxx um whatever series that's called i think that's the only one that can that can be used by ai to make ai art but if you have an nvidia even if it's not the best of the best i think you can still like try and um test out if your gpu can handle it now now if you have uh, a gpu that's suitable then that's the first step the next step is um, looking for the type of installation that um that suits your needs so if you want to just start and like go right ahead and you don't want to think about um coding setting up environments installing dependencies stuff like that this is the one for you so this is art room by art meme dove i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing it right but it's stable diffusion that has a gui on it which is really really cool so this is this is what it looks like so it has a it's that it has its own um, user interface you can just adjust a bunch of sliders things like that so it's really really convenient for someone who doesn't know coding someone who doesn't you know, know how to install lots of things into their system um this is just a one click install and you can use it by going to this link going to the releases then um, installing this exe 
then you should be good to go and you should be able to open it and start creating your own art from there so that's for windows for mac there is also an option and it's this one by divam gumta and it's for mac os but it has um a bigger a bigger need i think it needs 16 gigs of there we go. so 16 gigs of ram and either an m1 or an m2 for the mac then these are like the other requirements blah 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 i'm not i'm not too familiar with mac but if you're a mac user and you watch my channel you watch my videos that's great so i just uh, don't know much about these so you can go over here and see if this works for you and um another one is over here but by nmkd so this one it's another GUI setup, much like um, Artroom. So these two are pretty much the same. So Artroom Stable Diffusion, Stable Diffusion GUI. They're pretty much the same. Just a one-click install and like you're good to go, right? So those are like the one-click install. Um, the one that I use have a bit more like dependency stuff that you need to figure out. So this is the one that I'm using, Stable Diffusion Web UI, and it has its own gooey just like the others and some sliders things like that but it has like a fair bit of extra features which is mentioned here but you don't really need to know about them right now because you know, i just want you to like get started generate some art share them to the world like uh, we'll go on from there if you want to get more features but yeah if you do want like more features than these ones and you feel like um man i could go for the other things like in painting and stuff like that so this could be a great option for you but the only problem is this part can get confusing like python installing python installing it and um knowing how the checkpoint works so if you're ever worried that you'll have a hard time installing this one i suggest following just this guide that way it's it defines every step that you need to take to get all the files and install so this is the one that i'm using currently and it has the most features a cool user interface so yeah it's it's really really cool if these ones these ones are like a few updates uh, behind um automatics port by automatic 1111 but yeah um it has more features than them so if you want if you do want to use those features you can install this one other honorable mentions is this one art button ai this one so this is stable diffusion on the cloud and like basically someone else's it's running on someone else's computer and gpu and they can let you use it for free but um the downside of this is you can only use it for one image at a time so if you want to generate more than one artwork, generally it provides a grid for you. So something like this, um, my GPU can run like multiple images at a time. So because of that, I can generate more artworks than, than the art button. But yeah, if you don't have a GPU and you still want to play with it, I think this is a really great alternative. So this one and Crayon, uh, really, really cool websites that you can just play around with AI art. And this turned out beautifully by just me showing like, me asking for a Hudson River School painter. Amazing. So this is like my initial sketch and I fed it to uh, Stable Diffusion and let it run for a few generations, um, changing prompts along the way. So it gave me really interesting ideas, ones that I haven't thought before. These came out really, really beautifully, but you can tell that it changed a lot of the perspective, a lot of the colors, a lot of the layout which i didn't use but at the same time it's still like a really cool idea that i kept these generations and like incorporated them later on on my painting which is over here so i've incorporated some of the stuff shown here into this painting and yeah like it was like a really fun experience just to let ai help me like conceptualize the things over here could exist in this painting and hope to create way more ai art soon or ai aided art soon um now that i have access to this kind of technology so that's about it go try out ai art it's really really cool if you've already come this far make sure to leave a like and also want to see more videos like this one you can go ahead and subscribe see ya